Good morning, Internet. It is Friday, so let's talk wildlife photography. Now, last week we had a look at subject placement in the frame. Simple thing. You have a rectangle. Where do you put your subject, your wildlife subject, in the frame to tell stories, to get good composition, and so on and so forth. Now, I'm going to quickly start very in here by jumping you to this post. This is the post from last week. The video was pretty cool, I think. There was like a little polar bear graphic with him moving around. You can go check that out. But have a look at these images with me that we used last week. Lion in the frame, a giraffe, and then a lioness looking into the frame. That had to do with subject placement, but there's also something else I want you to notice about these images. It is banked shots, pure and simple. I didn't try and get over creative, pan it, zoom it, blur, radial, whatever, whatever. There's all, those are tools, they are just tools. People learn new tools while they're photography and they immediately try and do it all the time. It's not gonna work. So, Martha, I know this is one of the questions I'm going to answer in the blog for you next week. Martha sent some questions through. I'm going to answer those for you next week. Um, when you're out in the field, whether it's your first time in Africa, you're seeing your first lion, or you go and see your first polar bear, far, whatever the case might be, you're not going to get to that subject and immediately think, okay, how can I make this more creative? I think that forces the creativity, which is never a good thing, but you're going to bank a shot. You need good, solid animal and environment, good, solid portrait. And once you've banked those shots, the guys in the Mara from this year will know, I spoke about this a lot, bank your shots first. Then get creative, then look for different ways to do things. Radial blur, zoom blur, pan with the action, uh, multiple, whatever. There's so many options you can play with, but don't start off with it. Always bank your shots first. My example for today is, if I look at this image in Nitro, that's in the Khalakhari, straight up. Lion laying down in the environment, that's my banked shot. I got there, this animal could get up at any time and walk away. That's why I get the shot first in your portfolio, boom. And then start getting creative with something like this. That's a radial blur pulling out on the zoom while using a slow shutter speed. I would never, even now, after many, many, many years of shooting, I would never get to a sighting and off the bat try and do stuff like this. I wanna bank the shot first. I've had the question, um, don't you have enough line portraits? No, there's always something different. There's subtle nuances and things, but I would never, ever, ever start here. I would get the bank shot first, get the animal in the environment, maybe if I can, get a portrait, and once I've got those, then get creative. Those are tools. You don't have to use them all the time, only if and when necessary. Uh, so, I'll, use, I'll put these two examples up on the blog as well, but look through your own work. Do you have bank shots or do you try and be too creative? Creativity is something that we can learn and you can teach and you can kind of grow into it, but forcing it will not work. Bank your shots and then play around. That's it for this week. My name is Jerry. Have a great weekend. I will see you all next week. Have a good one.